With inflation a top priority at the White House, President Biden meeting with Fed Chair Jay Powell and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen at the White House yesterday. I spoke with Secretary Yellen after that meeting and started by asking her what took place in that conversation. And the president emphasized his intention to do everything he can to lower the costs that Americans face for um, important items in their budget. Uh, for example, for prescription drugs, for utility bills, um, things where uh, the president acting on his own or working with Congress can make a difference. And also his support for deficit reduction. I heard the president speaking uh, not long after that and laying out that he is supporting the dual mandate for the Fed. He listed first, number one, full employment, and number two, stable prices. I always thought the stable prices was the first mandate and the most important. Alan Greenspan used to say, if you take care of that, everything else follows. Was that intentionally kind of laying out that those two items come with, the, with full employment first? Well, listen, the Fed has a dual mandate, and it is maximum employment and price stability. I think that's the way it's phrased in the law. But we are at full employment. We have a very strong labor market that's been achieved, but inflation is way too high, and it's really a big burden on American households. And so um, maintaining full employment while bringing inflation down, that's the president's priority. And I believe that's consistent with how the Fed sees um, it, its, its program. Looking around, just in terms of deficit spending and trying to bring that down, there, there have been these trial balloons floated about student debt forgiveness. And the, the things that we've heard, the details that we've heard on this plan, at least at this point, suggest that it would be $10,000 forgiven for anybody making up to $300,000 filing jointly. It seems like that's a pretty regressive situation. A lot of money uh, north of $312 billion it would cost to do this, and that would be a lot of money going to people who aren't necessarily at the lowest end of the spectrums, people who haven't even gone to college. What are, what are your thoughts about trying to direct funds at this point and trying to make sure we're being the smartest about helping the people who need it the most? So this is a matter that no decisions have been made on. Um, there are discussions taking place, and, of course, the impact on the economy and equity are part of those discussions. Just in terms of what's been happening with the supply chain, a lot of these issues, again, are out of our control or things that will take a very long time to fix. But there is the idea that the longshoremen uh, in California and the ports there could go on strike at the end of this month. That seems like it would be something that would be a huge additional snarl to what we've already seen with the supply chain issues. Is the administration monitoring this? Have they been involved at all in any of the talks to try and make sure that that does not happen? Well, it's something that we're monitoring and recognize is critical, and we certainly hope an agreement um, will be reached that will keep the ports open and operating. I agree that this is really critically uh, important to making sure our supply chains um, don't, don't become... Um, more problematic than they are just right now. And, Brian, that part of the conversation, coming from what we were discussing yesterday morning, just if they go on strike there, what will that mean? Clearly, the administration recognizes this, sees this. Maybe they're not involved at the moment, but they will not let it get to that point, I think we can pretty clearly say.